people of Reddit, how do you start a conversation with a stranger? Let's jump in. Story one. Everyone is going to have different ideas about what a successful initiation of a conversation means, but a conversation requires both sides to trade information with each other. You can do everything right, and some people in some situations just don't want to talk. It's important to remember just how normal it is, and to keep trying your best. That being said, the best thing to do is find or jump in on a common interest. If they are wearing a shirt of their favorite band, game, sports team, whatever, they are most likely willing to chat about it with others. If, however, they don't have something to indicate their interest, you can listen in to what they're talking about with others. Are they talking about the game last night? Jump in on that! Or talk about where you both went to school, maybe where you like to shop, clothing brands, a show you like to watch, whatever. This should only be done if it's something you also enjoy, though. Don't ask about things you don't know about. You can make a comment, a question, or a general statement, but basically people love to talk about the things they love with people who also love those things, so use that to your advantage. Story 2. I typically use one of two tactics. A. Compliment something about them, their clothing, their voice. I only use this method, though, if I can genuinely mean it. B. Comment about an ongoing situation nearby that they also have been paying attention to. Usually with some kind of humor, especially if the situation is tense. Story 3. Do you know how much a polar bear weighs? Males, 775 to 1,200 pounds, or 351 to 544 kilos. Females, 330 to 650 pounds, or 150 to 295 kilograms. In other words, enough to break the ice. Hi, I'm Jim. Story 4. Ask them something about themselves that they're likely to want to talk about, and read into if they want to continue the conversation. Do it in a happy, maybe joking tone. If there's a sports game on and they're watching, ask them which team they support and why. If they're having a loud, boisterous conversation with a small group, come to them with something of the same tone. Just be confident when you say something and realize that not everyone wants to talk to strangers at every moment of the day, but a lot of people will respond positively. Story 5. Some icebreakers that I like to use. Nice weather, eh? I like your shirt. Where'd you get it? Would you like to see my You listen to Nirvana? Man, my brother loves them. What's your favorite song? Some of those are good, but I would probably stay away from number three, personally. Story six. Bring up something about the weather. I actually asked a conversation coach once why this topic works so well, and they said it's because A, everybody is subject to the weather, B, it's somewhat relevant to each day, and C, it's in nobody's control. So in other words, don't get into politics, religion, or their intimate life. Start with something light, like the weather. Story 7. Find people you have something in common with. If you're going to college, you'll have new classmates there who'll be doing the same course as you, so obviously you'll have a lot to talk about. At work it's the same thing, and ditto for hobbies as well. Start with the usual introduction, ask where they're from, etc., and just take it from there. Story 8. Striking up a conversation can be as simple as asking, hey, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to this location? From there, a light joke about figuring out where everything is that you base on a vaguely related story can lead to a full-fledged conversation. Trust me, I'm a bartender. Talking to strangers is literally my bread and butter. Story 9. It isn't necessarily like people just approach random folks and become friends. It usually starts through some mutual situations like being roommates, sports teams, group projects, assigned seats, being in the same club, etc. Very similar to being in middle school. With that said, I highly suggest getting involved in some type of club or organization. You'll meet people and probably have a more broad experience. For me, I went to school to become a teacher, and I was a camp counselor for a summer. At school, I worked maintenance around campus, was in student government, and also had a summer that I worked for a teaching program. I met a lot of people through all of those, but there's lots of similar things outside of school you can join and get the same results. Sports leagues, which do come in co-ed by the way, volunteer work, clubs like a fishing club, etc. Story 10. To be honest, I've tried several canned openers, and for me, I've found that you just kinda have to think like it's your last day on earth. You just gotta muster up the courage and just go for it. Yeah, you might trip over your words, but hey, at least you did something rather than chickening out. Also, as a side note, if you have a dad joke, just throw it out there. Story 11. Pick something relevant to the moment and ask them a question about it. What did they think about that difficult assignment? Ask where a building is and comment on how easy or hard it is to navigate campus or the workplace or the city you're in. Ask where they're from, 
close by or far away? Maybe they're wearing a band or a sports tee that you love. What neighborhood do they live in? Which city are they from? Start there, and you just find things in common with people. Or not, which is okay too. You'll gain confidence, and eventually you'll know when to ask people what their plans are later. If they want to hang out, and maybe ask for their number. Story 12. Compliment any article of clothing they have on that day. It's a great way to start a conversation on a positive note. People often feel much more confident when someone validates their fashion choices. People usually will elaborate on the item you complimented, which opens up the door for follow-up questions and more conversation. I can't tell you how many times I've complimented someone on an article of clothing and got the response, OMG, thank you, I got it at this store, and it's got pockets! It's just good fun, and it's especially fun if said thing you complimented had a story behind it or if it was a gift from someone special. People love talking about that sort of stuff. Story 13. Just say, hey, sup, my dude? It's quite disarming. But really, commonalities, and ask them about themselves. It's easy to read people through things such as a patch on a coat, the type of shoes they're wearing, a t-shirt with something on it, etc. I worked on industrial equipment for years with many different customers. Going into their office, you could immediately tell what hobby they had, or something they were proud of. Ask about that thing with enthusiasm, and bam, you're in their good graces. Story 14. If you treat people like they're already a friend, eventually they might actually become one. This has been my go-to philosophy about conversations with anyone, and it has done wonders for me. I genuinely have made lifelong friends with people I met while shopping. Once I waited in a line outside of Best Buy to pick up a mini Super Nintendo, and there was already three people standing around, so I swung over to McDonald's, bought four coffees, came back, and gave everyone coffees. One of the guys there and I still keep in touch regularly to this day. Story 15. Maybe it's just a numbers game for you. Typically, I've stricken up a conversation with a stranger over something we're both experiencing at the time, such as a late bus, a vending machine that doesn't work, or waiting in line for something. As a woman, it seems easiest to just smile and make a casual observation of what is happening, and not seeming too desperate for the interaction to go anywhere. I might be waiting in line and notice the person behind me wearing a cool shirt or a nice dress, and I'll say something like, I love your dress! Depending on the person, you might get a good response, or you might just get kind of a meh response. Younger women may be more guarded, so you'll have to judge for yourself if you think they'll respond positively to you. And it's also worth noting that I learned the hard way that smiling at someone's friendly baby while in line could freak out the mom, so I try not to do that anymore. And if anyone tells you flat out that they don't want to talk or can't, apologize, accept it, and move on. There's no need to convince them that you're harmless. Alright, so now I move into the rapid fire segment for stories too short to make a full entry out of, but too good to be left out. Let's jump right in. Excuse me, I'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. If you're doing something common, comment on it and start a convo. Greetings, traveler. Looking to trade? Khajiit has wares to sell, at good prices. It's a cliche, but the weather. How they respond to that query usually tells me if they're open to having a conversation or not. Walk up to someone and press A. Be the friend you're looking for, and you will find others like you. Hi there, you look like an industrious person. How would you like to get involved in an exciting new business opportunity? Walk up to someone who looks alone or bored, or anyone really, and just say, hey, what's up? And ask them about something, about whatever event you're at, or something you see nearby. Literally anything. So now I'm going to add my take. I picked this topic today because it's something that I've been working on myself, and typically my go-to for kind of, you know, a new social situation, networking event, whatever, is just a compliment or a comment on the situation. One thing that really cemented this for me was a guy complimented on his beard when I was at the mall. So he just gotten off the elevator and started walking the same direction as me. I was heading to my car, so I was just kind of throwing out the compliment. Guy had a killer playoff beard, and I just said, sure, I'll throw something out. Though what ended up happening was he actually ended up catching up to me as we were walking, because I was a little bit in front of him, and we started chatting about like how my day was, we started talking about like plans for the evening, we t started talking about his family, he had a dinner that his, his parents were coming over to his place that he was going to host them for, we started talking about his childhood a little bit, kind of how he was raised and everything. So that was kind of the moment for me that I realized that, okay, something as simple as a compliment can actually turn into a conversation. I think it helped that because we were walking the same direction, there was kind of that awkward, like, you know, when you say goodbye to someone and you both walk the same way, there was that. But um, 
But after that experience, I realized that really the whole point of a conversation starter is to just see if the person's open to chat with a stranger or if they're completely closed off. I mean, best case scenario, you meet someone new. You meet a cool friend, maybe you, you hang out, maybe you meet a girl or a guy you're interested in, you go on a date, whatever. Worst case scenario is they tell you to f*** off, in which case that's really more on them than it is on you. I mean, if they're not the kind of person who's interested in even being civil to someone and has that kind of personality and that kind of worldview, probably lives their life in a lot of pain, frankly. And I've definitely witnessed people like that who they were actually scared that other people were out to get them, right? Like, if someone says a compliment to them, their interpretation was, oh, they're making fun of me. Like, they're being sarcastic. There's no way that they'd compliment me genuinely. So you, you, it really speaks more about that person who took the compliment negatively than it says about you, the complimenter. It's just a way to open things without, you know, uh, without really any chance of, of massive public embarrassment. Worst case scenario is they yell at you to F off and you just go, okay, that, enjoy the rest of your day, dude. See you around. And that's been kind of the game changer for me, but it's, it, it's tough just talking to people. It really, it really can be. Now that's it for today. I just want to throw out there that at moving forward from this video, uh, I'm probably not going to have my face in the videos anymore. I'm going to be going back to the previous format just because I've found that having to do the like do the audio and the video recording separately, compile them, match them up, kind of sync them together and then upload it all as and then edit them and, and get it all so, to work correctly, while not particularly difficult, has been kind of an impediment to me actually making videos. And, and I know I wasn't exactly consistent before, but I feel this has made my consistency even worse. So at this point in time, I just don't think that having my face on camera is the route to go right now. I do want to have my face on camera at some point, but I just don't think that's going to be right now. Just an update for all you guys and gals that have been following me. I know I haven't been super responsive in the comments and stuff lately either, but I think one of the steps to being able to do that better is to just take my face out of the videos for now. So that's going to be what happens moving forward. For you new guys and gals, if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe down below. It does a ton to help out the channel, and I really appreciate it. Now, with that said, I'm Redlist. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Even if you won't be seeing me.